Hello and welcome along to Mondo Chalavet Movies, my name is John and this video is going to be what movies I've picked up recently on physical media but first I've got an unboxing for you. So I've just received a package through the post and this package was sent to me by Paul Marsden. Now Paul gave me a message and said Hi John, recently watched your 4K collection and noticed you are missing a classic. So Paul put this straight in the post and it must have been posted by Top Gun Maverick, the speed has come. So, I'll open this up and see what Paul has sent. So once again, thank you Paul for sending this to me. So I'll have a look in here, is there a note? Yes, there is a note. The note says, Hi John, here is the classic missing from your collection. Keep up the great work, Paul Marsden. Thanks Paul, as always I'll be keeping this note in with the movie that you sent us. So the movie that Paul sent is, it's got some paper towel on, which is something that uh, I really enjoy, you know, in a fashion. So the movie that Paul has sent is, you know, this is funny, and I'll tell you why. Because the very first a uh, Blu-ray that I got with my Blu-ray player, the first ever Blu-ray I got, was Mamma Mia. I got Mamma Mia and I also got Hancock and I got Wall-E. So I've always wanted to upgrade a Mamma Mia to 4K. I'm a big fan of ABBA. And I think this, I think these movies are quite fun in a way. I think that the best thing about it is the music, obviously. And I think that the circumstances that they put themselves into in this movie is quite, quite strange, actually. I mean, when you get these movies, when you have these... Um, you have these sort of straights to when they start singing about this and that and it's in, in with the film. It's quite strange, but I think that it works well with uh, ABBA stuff. I wish ABBA would get back together properly and do a concert, but we all know how that's going. So this one here is the second movie, which I haven't seen. And I've always wanted to get it. And I thought I thought what I would probably have to do is get like a double pack of them on 4K. Because, to be honest, I never really bumped into the Mamma Mia on 4K, but... Here it is, it's got, uh, this is the second one obviously, it's got the 4K, it's got the Blu-ray, and it's got a bonus disc DVD. Now I'm not too sure what the, the bonus disc is, I think that's maybe like extras, or maybe that's like a sing-along version, probably, probably, probably. Where's me ladders? So this, this movie here is a what I would consider like a feel-good movie. So of course it's got a slipcover as well, Paul knows me well. So what I'll do is I'll go and check this out now, because I'm filming this the day before, I'm going to film the video that you're going to be watching now. Wow. Doctor Who fashion. So I've checked the picture quality out in this and wow it's got Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision and this looks spectacular. Now this movie is, is basically outside in a, in a dream destination in a, in a Greek island and it's that it's just absolutely sensational. I've got to say it's one of the best looking 4Ks I've seen. And that's just not saying this because I've got this on a subscriber mail. This is the picture is just so bright and vibrant. So I can honestly say this movie is reference quality on 4K. So I want to thank Paul Marsden once again for sending this to me. That's Mamma Mia, here we go again. Cheers, Paul. So next on the recommendation of Matt Chapman, he told me about this movie and I thought, ah, that sounds all right. So for 50 pence, I got Noah. Now, I'm quite interested in these type of movies. I don't really have many of them, but when I do see them, I do like them. You know, movies like Troy and all that type of thing. The only thing is when they do these big budget movies, sometimes they say that they just don't add up that much. But... The fact is that uh, Matt had recommended this to me and also the fact that it's got a great cast in here. I thought, well, why not? And for 50 pence, you can't go wrong with that. I did take the stickers off, but it's left a little bit of residue there. I don't know if you can see that, but that sticky stuff that needs to come off. We all know how I get rid of that one, don't we? Where's me lighter fuel? So a couple of drops of the old lighter fuel get rid of that, no problem. Now I'll put this movie on just to check it out to see what it looked like, like for picture quality. I've got to say, the picture quality in here looks pretty stunning. It's a thing to take into consideration that maybe the Blu-ray might suffice in some movies. But this movie looked quite good. So thanks once again to Matt Chapman for reminding me on about this movie. That's Noah. So next up from Poundland, for unbelievably one pound, I've got The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest. Now the reason why I picked this up is because if you've seen one of my recent videos on my subscriber mail that I got from Michael Hewitt, he sent me a load of slipcovers. So... This was one of them, so I knew I had to get this one. So they picked this up for a pound with the help of Michael Hewitt. And now have this completed version, I find. 
looks really good on the shelf. A nice bit of embossing there. That's the girl who kicked the hornet's nest. So next up from HMV, I've got Beware My Brethren. Now this is from 88 Films. And what a, what a lovely slipcover that is. So retro. I love these slipcovers. I don't know, don't know anything about this movie, but I do know it's from 1972. It was originally called The Fiend, which I'm sure I've heard of that, that title before. And it does star Patrick McGee. Now, Patrick McGee was in uh, A Clockwork Orange. He plays Mr. Alexander, who is on the keyboard, who is actually writing the book A Clockwork Orange, when Alex DeLarge comes in to sort of uh, invade his house. So this edition has some good reversible art. There is, you have the cover, you have this cover in here, and you also have some more reversible art if you wanted it. So you've got a lot to choose from from there. I've decided to choose that. Also as well, you get this uh, quite nice booklet, quite nice thick booklet. Which yeah, it's, it's got, there's a lot of different art in here, which looks like it's just been made for this particular release. It's got some, uh, some writings in here as well as some some pictures from the movie now this it's not a hammer movie but it kind of does come across like a hammer movie i think that in this time in the 70s everybody was trying to copy hammer getting probably some of the same actors who were in this there's a lot of actors in here that you remember from uh you know like this I can't show you all of these pictures but it does it does come across like a sort of a hammer trial movie if you know what i mean one of those ones like hammer and tegon uh, when they did try to make this this stylized hammer movie now i put this movie on and i was for some reason i wasn't really expecting much on it and i thought you know that the picture quality will look average i would say but when i put it on i was really amazed by how good this movie looked it looked really it looked pristine and very sharp as well and the colors in here are quite what some of them colors when you say wow that especially reds this bloke had a red top on and it really stood out so if you think that the picture quality may be a little bit average on here think again it's absolutely brilliant i'll put that on there I don't know if you want to see if you can read that one there saves my eyes trying to read this you get some special edition features on there as well it's a stereo soundtrack and i just like i say that it's amazing what what 88 can dig up it's, it's amazing what they put out and the quality that they put out now I watched a thing on here, it's like a comparison view, it, com it compared the English cut with the European cut. Now there's a lot more stuff in the European cut. I'm unsure at this point if this is the European cut, but I do know that in the sort of scenes it showed there was a lot more graphic stuff in the, in the European cut. I'm hoping that the European cut is the one on here. It doesn't say it's got two cuts of the movie on here, but it does say it's transferred from the original negative. So hopefully that means you've got the longer cut on here. I would imagine with the, having a, the, a comparison video on here that they have put the longer cut on here, fingers crossed, because it looks like it's got a lot more stuff in it. But another one of these movies, I love these early 70s movies that just take a massive box for me. I would probably have seen this, maybe, probably as The Fiend, because that rings a bell, uh, in, on the, the TV in the early 70s, because I used to watch every single film that was on there. So the chances are I bumped into this one, although I can't remember anything about it. And the bits I put on, I couldn't really, you know, remember anything about it. But it does look quite a bizarre movie. And these movies, I like the kind of, uh, when I have these strange 70s movies, when you cannot really pinpoint what's going on, uh, you know, at first. And you kind of led into this kind of strange world. So that's another interesting release from 88 Films. That's Beware My Brethren. So next up from Arrow, I got Hell High. Now this is an absolutely amazing cover. And this, this is embossed as well. This is embossed. That's embossed. Look at that. Look at that artwork there. Really, really nice. I like the way that they put nothing on the back. I think that's a really good touch. And also embossing there. Now this, this movie here, it's funny because I didn't, I thought I've never heard of this movie. I didn't even know it was going to even come out. Now, when I saw the reversible art in it, which is this reversible art, I thought, I've seen that Arrow have teased this one in one of the postcards that they usually send out in the movies. It's been on there, so I thought, right, that, that's what that movie is. Now, I never heard anything about it apart from seeing that. And I remember when this came out and I saw that, that picture, that postcard, to say this movie is coming out. I thought, never, ever heard of it. Now, what it's saying in this movie is that this movie came out, the reason why it's unheard of is because it came out in 1989. Now this is at the end of the slasher craze that went on in the 80s, started off around about 1979. 
and by 1989 it was kind of dead in the water. But this came out right at the end, and apparently according to this, the introduction I've heard on this movie, when I, when I put it on to check it out, it did say that this broke all the moulds, and it's one of these movies that's like one of the best slashes you'll ever see, and it's kind of completely different to any slasher that came before it, that's what they say. It breaks a lot of rules in this movie as well, so that's got me very interested. Apparently most of the people in here just did this movie and that was it, they moved on and didn't do anything else. So, and it's got a brand new 2K restoration from the original negatives. Now, I've got to admit, this movie looked pretty spectacular. As most of the Arrow ones do, I think that when you get a thing from Arrow, you do know it's probably going to look the best it's ever going to look. Now, look at this one. This was the car that came in, this Desperado. Now, Desperado was a brilliant movie. I like it much better than El Mariachi, which was the first one. The third one as well, which I can't remember the title of, but I know that Johnny Depp's in it, wasn't that great. Once Upon a Time in Mexico, I think. It was all right, but this one here, if you want to see a mariachi movie, this one is absolutely brilliant. It's like so like a Quentin Tarantino movie. It, it, it's unbelievable. But So I'm really I'm wondering if that's going to be a 4K. Maybe it is. So we got a booklet in here as well with some great artwork. So according to this introduction, this movie is meant to be really brutal, really violent. I mean, it's an 18, so it's obviously got stuff in it, which are going to be quite... Uh, it's got a lot of kills in it, it says. And uh, there's uh, there's a lot of stuff to do with it. Maybe it's paying homage, maybe, to a little bit of the the 70s or 80s slashes, maybe. So if anybody's in the anybody's wanting to get a new, well, I'm saying a new, a new to the, the people who liked slasher movies, you might want to check this one out. So it says about the restoration. This is. Presenting its original aspect ratio of 1.85 to 1, and the original 35 camera, 35 millimeter camera negative was scanned in 2K resolution, um, and graded and restored for this release. So yeah, this is shaping up to be quite an interesting release. It's one of those ones when you see it, you think that looks absolutely brilliant, but is it? And when you hear about it, I mean, this this uh, it's got a lot of special features on here, which you can only see on the back of the box. You can't see on any other bit of the uh, the paperwork, which is by the boxes, which is brilliant. I think that's an amazing thing to have on the shelf. When you can pick it up, you can look at that and you say, oh, what's that about? And it doesn't tell you. Actually, this movie, it does. I thought this movie was a lot more newer than 1989 from the picture. Especially that picture there looks like it's a brand new movie. So it's not. I got this and this was full price, $17.99, which I think is a little bit expensive. I do think that uh, Arrow should come back down about the $15.99, but maybe the cost of production has gone up this much. Plus as well, this slip cover here isn't going to be cheap to produce because they'll have to build a sort of another form for it to make sure that they can print this out and also emboss this type of thing. So it takes the prices up a bit. But I do think that this one, if why because I, I just like the look of it, I want to make sure I've got it. But maybe it's another one like, like Last Matinee which will be coming out in the sale in a few months time maybe about christmas but it's a bit of a risk to take if you want to just get this type of uh, release and you want to have it you know in this form you don't want to miss out kind of so you might want to pay that extra couple of quid i don't really mind actually because i know i'm getting some value for my money that's hell high so next up from hmv on 88 films i've got hitcher in the dark now this is spine number 72 in the italian collection and it sits right about there and if I'm honest, this movie is directed by uh, Umberto Lenzi and also produced by Joe D'Amato, which I, I haven't really seen that too many times on one of these releases. So that's, that's a kind of double whammy there. Now, this movie here is from 1989. And as usual, it comes in this, you know, the hard box. It's got a great, great hard box here. It's got a nice spine. Got great artwork there. I have watched a bit of this movie. I uh, hadn't seen it before, hadn't even heard of it before, but when I watched it, this is shaping up to be quite a really good film. It's quite brutal as well. It was a lot more brutal than I thought it was going to be. I'll just put you the blurb on there if you can see it. it saves my eyes. But it kind of starts off, and this is not a spoiler, this guy here is just a bit of an absolute nutcase who was driving around in this, in this uh, Winnebago. And he's just picking people up and killing them. And that seems to be the way this movie is going at the moment. And he's got a hair trigger. If anybody says anything he doesn't like, he immediately sort of kills him. And funny enough, with this being Spine 72, it's got a documentary. It's got half of a documentary about Umberto Lenzi. Now, this is, this is Spine number 72, and this has part two of it. 
Now there's spine number 73, and that's got part one of it. It's a little bit back to front, I think. So anyway, in this in this uh, set, you're treated to a reversible art. Now it's a great reversible art. It's, it's really 1989. That would be the type of thing you would see in a video shop, actually. I like these, these covers. It probably is the cover you would get in the video shop. You do get art on the disc, and you do get the original, well, the original cover that they've released it in there if you want. But the reason why I swap this round all the time anyway is because I need to have that spine number 72 shown because it'll, you know, if I didn't have it in this box, it would be the same as them. And it's all about uniformity. And this this side doesn't have it on. And you, you do get a poster in here as well. The poster is of the art that is on the box. Nice thick sort of, it's not cardboard, but it's getting towards that. Let's say like heavy duty paper. It's a great cover that actually. It does tell you a lot about what, what is in this movie. Yeah, that's the girl in this movie is great. She's one of these final girls that's like really tough and doesn't take no, uh, doesn't take no messing off this uh, killer. That's not a spoiler by the way. So yeah, that's a real throwback I find that cover. Absolutely brilliant. So this is uh, a brand new uh, 4K transfer from the original camera negative. And I was going to say this movie looks absolutely, does look really spectacular. Now the funny thing is with this 4K transfer, it does seem that the colours, for some reason, well it's obviously the 4K transfer, it just looks, I was going to say that the colours on here look spectacular, and they do. Now that's one of the reasons why when you get a 2K transfer, it seems that the, the, the colours just don't seem to be able to come across as they do. I mean, this is just on a Blu-ray, upgrade on my 4k telly and it's got the whole 1989 fashion as well which is brilliant and i tell you what i don't know about anybody else but i find that anybody who dances in the 1980s horror movie cannot dance to save their lives there's a group of kids dancing in this movie and every single one of them is out of time now i don't know if that's because they're not listening to the music that we're hearing playing over the thing but honestly well if you watch them someone's clicking their hands someone's clapping their hands and the person next to them's clapping it on the other beat the people dancing or dancing at the time that they're clapping, it's just, it just always seems to be in the horror films of that time. So personally for me, bad dancing in 1980s horror movies is absolutely brilliant. I look forward to it actually. And also you do get this booklet with more of the great art on there. Really well done, this this uh, this artwork on here. Now you can see, these. this is, everyone's got their, well it's obviously 80s so they've got the fashion on there. This is the girl I was talking about. She's, she's tough as old boots. And actually, what I've got in here, I mean, this is just me because of my eyes. It's got, the booklet in here has got really big print in it. And it does tell you all about the previous films of Umberto Lenzi, which I do want to, um, I do want to read through this one, especially if I can see it. And also the fact that it talks about his other movies. Now, when I was looking through his movies, I thought, oh, it's another Umberto Lenzi movie. I think I've got quite a few of his, and I've got loads of his movies, actually, probably more than I've got from either Fulci or Dario Argento put together, which is very strange to think I'm saying that, because he's not a, he's not a director, an Italian director that's well-known, but he's, he's, he's made some really good movies. And, yeah, so, I think that's the, I've watched half this movie, and I've got to say this movie is pretty brutal. It's a lot more brutal than I thought it was going to be. Um... Yep, but the the picture quality obviously is a 4K mask and they've done a really good job in it. It's <laughs> there's some uh, there's some pictures in here, may not tell you that much. And yeah, this is there's a lot of stuff in here, a lot of stuff in this booklet. To anyone who's a fan of cheesy 80s Italian horror, try saying that after 10 pints, will like this film. And that one lives just there. So that's Hitcher in the Dark. So, thanks for watching, you take care, and I will see you on the next video. Cheers!